This was a determined systematic effort by senior employees of a major company to destroy the lives of a couple in Natick, all because they published content the company executives didn't like. Imagine if you were targeted by a corporation because of what you said about them on the internet. Well, this Nantucket couple didn't have to imagine the scenario because they were the target of a harassment campaign by this huge technology company that is in our everyday life, eBay. So what happened? Well, this Nantucket couple was getting into the e-commerce space and they were getting really good at using eBay. eBay started making some changes that they didn't agree with. At the same time, this couple was the owner of a small e-commerce blog, e-commerce bytes, where they had a small following. Well, eBay wasn't happy. And at the same time, some employees and executives of the company started seeing this couple's small e-commerce blog as a threat to eBay. So someone hired some subcontractors to allegedly start cyber stalking this couple to make them stop publishing on their e-commerce blog. So eBay executives and employees started cooking up a plot that would make them shut up for good. And if that sounds scary, it should be. Let's go over what happened. Late last summer, an executive at eBay sent a series of text messages to James Ball, who was the company's senior director of safety and security at the time. If we're ever going to take her down, now is the time. Later, the executives emphasized, I want her done. Ball responded that he had a plan and that he allegedly set it in motion. Four more eBay employees and contractors, including Ball, with a cyber stalking campaign a sweeping criminal complaint released Monday by the Massachusetts U.S. Attorney's Office details the unlikely appalling consequences of that exchange. Basically what happened is in 2020, eBay employees used the resources of a Fortune 500 company to create a systematic campaign of harassment with the goal of kicking a small e-commerce blog off the internet. The harassment campaign was planned in a series of meetings. In one, Boss showed the assembled team a clip of the movie Johnny B. Good, in which the pranksters deliver increasingly absurd and unwelcome items to people's homes. A brainstorm allegedly followed. What could they send to their victims that would terrify them? All right, let's go over this campaign because there's a lot to it. This campaign ended up doxing and threatening this poor Natic couple for just publishing their thoughts and opinions, expressing their freedom of speech. Let's get this straight. This was a systematic campaign executed by a Fortune 500 company, and it was plotted by the staff of that company. So how did they harass the couple? They started simple. They signed up to weird stuff using their email address like we all have to our friends, right? They signed up to the satanic kit temple, to some furry stuff, you know, just random stuff. Then they started sending some gifts. First, they sent a preserved fetal pig head. Then they delivered a mask of a bloody pig's face which is freaking terrifying to receive. After they got the package, a Twitter account sent the couple a message saying, do I have your attention now? Now that's freaking creepy, right? But they didn't stop there. They kept going. Then they started escalating the packages. This, this shit gets, is, is really scary. They sent a package of fly larvae and live spiders and live cockroaches. Man, that's the stuff that you do to your mortal enemies, right? Like that's, that's terrifying. But they didn't stop there. They started getting a little frisky. A little frisky. They signed up the couple for subscriptions to Hustler Magazine. Nice. Then they tried to make some mogul moves for the couple by starting and opening up a Adam and Eve franchise under the couple's name, which honestly I would have gone for. It's a pretty hot industry right now. But then it started getting a lot scarier. After all the the small things which i mean the live cockroaches aren't small that, that would be terrifying but they started to up the harassment even more they sent a book to the husband titled coping with the loss of a spouse and that very same day they sent the couple a funeral wreath i mean at this point you might as well carve their name into a bullet and send it to them like they do in barry i mean that's the message you're trying to send right let's get this straight the goal of this campaign was to inflict emotional and psychological torture to the couple to make them either stop posting on their blog or to improve the coverage of, of what they're writing about eBay. And how are they planning on doing this? Well, they were planning on doing a white knight strategy where essentially they would have two parties where one would be the harassing party and sending creepy messages on Twitter. And then eBay would try and swoop in and help the couple 
and be like, hey, we can figure out who this is. And once they figured it out and stopped the harassment, they would hope that the coverage of them would improve. Now, like, think about how corrupt and fucked up that is. They were planning to influence an independent blog by having a system of harassment. You know where else or organizations do this? In Afghanistan, in Mexico, in areas that have really high corruption. So the fact that this happened in the United States of America should be frightening to you. What would you all do if a company sent you live cockroaches? Leave it down in the comments. That's also when, pro that's also when prosecutors say the eBay team escalated to in-person surveillance. Several of them allegedly flew out to Boston, checked in at the Ritz, -Carl well, checked in at the Ritz Carlton, and drove out that night to Natick, intent on installing a GPS monitor on the couple's RAV4. Dude, everyone in New England dra drives this RAV4, I swear. Everyone drives this one car. I see it everywhere. Anyways, they had practiced on a similar model in the eBay parking lot before the departure. What the? They were out here practicing? What is this, like breaking bad stuff? The following day, eBay's director of global Re resiliency at the time, David Harville, allegedly bought a screwdriver, painter's tools, pry bar, and rubber gloves. I believe, based on my training and experience, that these were the tools that Harville intended to use to break into the victim's garage. On August 16th, members of eBay's team allegedly tailed the couple in a rented Dodge caravan. The surveillance team was listening to the local police dispatch. When the couple reported they were being followed, the crew peeled off. Damn, dude, that's some cartel stuff right there. That is literally what the cartel does to people. That night, court documents say three of the defendants ran up a $750 bill at a Boston restaurant, batting around some potential deliveries like chainsaws, human feces, and a dead rat. In the middle of the night, they sent an emergency plumber to the home. <laughs> wow, that's what they go with? I mean, if they wanted someone to just defecate in their house, they could have just sent Amber Heard. Their surveillance continued, prosecutors say, as did this harassment. A little after midnight on August 18th, a classified ad appeared on Craigslist promoting a week-long block party for singles, couples, and swingers, and listed the victim's Natick address. Damn, they scheduled a orgy at their house, bro? Later that afternoon, the, the two ELI account posted their names and address as well as a few minutes later, a direct message. You get my gifts? Dude, he doxed them and then called them the C-word? Damn, these people were serious. This was a determined systematic effort by senior employees of a major company destroy the lives of a couple in Natick, all because they published content the company executives didn't like. For a while, they succeeded, psychologically devastating these victims for weeks as they desperately tried to figure out what was going on and stop it. On August 21st, 11 days after the alleged harassment campaign began, two threats converged with relative speed according to court documents. A member of the eBay group made contact with the couple as part of the next phase of the White Knight strategy. And Nantic police, Nantic police traced a rental car license plate to an eBay contractor allegedly involved in the scheme. As Nantic PD began making inquiries, the eBay employees and contractors scrambled over text to get their story straight. When they realized that the gift cards they had purchased to fund their campaigns could be traced to Santa Clara, California, not far from eBay San Jose, headquarters they allegedly sought to create a samoan poi in santa clara poi stands for person of interest then he becomes our primary suspect so essentially they were saying we got to find someone in san jose that they can trace these messages back to and put the blame on him as the person of interest or the person who's sending these messages and coming up with this plot so they were trying to blame this on some random civilian you can't be more fucking disgusting than that. What? By August 22nd, the Natick police called in the FBI. The eBay team allegedly continued to assemble both to law enforcement and to eBay's own lawyers, who by August 26th had begun their own interviews about the matter. As the police and eBay's lawyers continued to investigate, the defendants allegedly detected digital evidence that showed their involvement, further obstructing what had by then become a federal investigation. They were tampering, right? They tampered with the federal investigation. So, get fucked, losers. On August 30th, the company placed three of the employees on administrative leave. In a statement posed on its website, eBay said that it had terminated all involved employees. Former eBay CEO 
Devin Weneg also left the company that month. While his name isn't named in the criminal complaint, eBay confirmed that he is executive one in this lawsuit that's right, right here, right here, this lawsuit, he is executive one. The company also confirmed Wednesday that executive two is former chief communications officer, Steve Weinmer. The internal investigation found that while Mr. Weinig's communications were inappropriate, there was no evidence that he knew in advance about or authorized the actions that were later directed toward the blogger and her husband. eBay statement says, however, as a company previously announced, there were a number of considerations leading to his departure from the company. Hmm? Hmm. Sure, there were. So, all in all, the six former eBay employees and contractors all charged with conspiracy to commit cyberstalking and conspiracy to tamper with witnesses. Each charge carries a sentence of up to five years in prison, three years of supervised release, a fine up to $250,000, and restitution. We're not done. That article was released in June 15, 2022. So, there's been some updates to the case, right? At this point, all the people involved have been charged, and they have also pleaded guilty to the cyber stalking campaign. And man, do I want to show you some of the text messages. In one text message included in the criminal case, Weimer told Ba of Ina Steiner, the wife, I want her done. She is a biased troll who needs to get burned down. So essentially, this couple got bullied off the platform for exercising their right to the freedom of speech on a separate block, right? They got kicked off and they kept on being harassed by eBay. Now you might say, well, eBay has the right to moderate their platform, right? They have the right to protect their brand. Well, think just for a second. eBay isn't a social media platform, right? So why are they trying to suppress the speech of people who are on their platform, right? Unless you're selling Nazi pendants like Shein does on their platform, eBay has no reason to try and kick you off or to try and silence you. eBay, this giant Fortune 500 company, targeted this small business, kicked them off their platform, harassed them, and doxed them, all because they were posting criticisms about the company on their personal blog. And I know what you're thinking. YouTube does this too. YouTube polices other people off of the YouTube platform. Just look at what happened to the act man, right? But the thing is, imagine that instead of YouTube just demonetizing your, your YouTube channel, that they... I don't know, sent your YouTube partner manager to go and harass you and dox you if you if you didn't agree with the direction YouTube was taking the platform. That would be absolutely wild. This is essentially what eBay did. So I know what you're thinking. What if they deserve to be canceled? What if they're saying what if they're saying things that were false about eBay? Well they weren't. They were complaining about policies that would benefit big businesses on the platform and that would hurt small businesses on the platform and last i checked no one was out here getting canceled for supporting small businesses so now you have all this context and here's the kicker they actually pled guilty a former top executive at ebay incorporated has pled guilty to his role in a campaign to harass and intimidate a massachusetts couple who published an online newsletter he perceives as critical of the company. April 16th, 2022, James Ball, eBay's former senior director of safety and security, admitted on Monday in federal court to nine charges in connection with the campaign that involved disturbing deliveries. The intimidation started when the senior executives at eBay became frustrated with the newsletter's tone and content. Ball lied to investigators, deleted digital evidence, and falsified records, authorities said. That's criminal. If he received the maximum sentence, which he won't, Ball faces decades in prison. Sued eBay and several employees, including former CEO David Weneg, last summer over what they describe as conspiracy to intimidate, threaten, to kill, torture, terrorize, stalk, and silence them in order to stifle their reporting on eBay. The lawsuit alleged employees were carrying out the directives of Weneg and another executive. Weneg was not criminally charged and denied any knowledge of the harassment campaign. And his lawyers have asked that though Steiner's claims against them be dismissed. What a freaking joke. Somewhere in this court document, it says that when they gave the go ahead for some of the plans that this harassment team executed. Here's what pisses me off about this case and what should piss you off about this case too. Even though the people involved pleaded guilty and everyone in the company knew what was happening, 
right? Because the court document said that someone gave the go-ahead for these subcontractors to start the harassment campaign. Despite that, eBay, as a company, isn't being charged for their role in the harassment campaign. On the other hand, they're being congratulated and exemplified by the government as an upstanding company for their role in helping the investigation. So it turns out that their white knight strategy worked even though it didn't go exactly as planned, right? It was one, start a harassment campaign, two, work with the FBI to snitch on our harassment team, and three, profit and get congratulated on our role. I'm also really sus about what happened behind closed doors that made it so that eBay was in charge in this lawsuit. Was the fact that David Weneg pleaded the fifth enough for eBay's name to be kept off the lawsuit? That sounds really fishy. Secondly, is it okay for a company to do whatever they want as long as it's through a subcontractor? That sounds really corrupt. This is an example of how tech corporations have become way too big. In my opinion, they have so much power that they can start influencing, influencing the decisions of courts and the government. And that is getting dangerously close to becoming systematic corruption and bribery. If this keeps going, then tech companies will become the mafia of the United States because essentially that's what they would be doing is influencing government, influencing the courts, just like how the cartels do in Mexico. Anyways, what do you all think? Am I overreacting? And I really hope I am, but I would love to continue the conversation. Leave a comment with your opinions or leave a like if you liked the video, dislike the video if you love our corporate overlords, or continue the discussion by reacting to this video. And don't forget to subscribe because there's going to be another banger next week. So until then, take care.